Ooh. Today I'm going to try this. Well, you can see it's smoking like hot because I've just finished uh, cutting, cutting the end off, cutting all the insides out of the inside the burn chamber so there's no mesh, no washer, no nothing. It's just bare metal. And please don't judge my welding. It's, I've not got the right equipment, but I mean, I've managed to half semi, quasi, almost TIG weld on that side. Yeah, I'm working with what I've got. So I'm going to put this in the diesel heater. I'm going to run a 50-50 mix of waste oil and diesel, and we're going to see how this runs with none of the normal internals that would be inside the diesel heater, a uh, diesel heater burn chamber. Now, all I have to do is get that back in there without burning myself. I'll bring you back once we are uh, ready to run. Right, we have it primed. I have the afterburner sitting there. We're going to use the remote control via the app. That's the uh, washer part out of the inside of the burn chamber. It's just got like a spot weld on the other side in there and you can kind of... I'm thinking you could probably grind it out if you were trying. If you cut the grains, uh, the spot welds out the side and then just weld them back up. But I want to take the whole insides out. Right, here we are. Let's set it to what we had it to last time. Hey, I don't even know if this will even run. Let's go. Heater started. Okay. Glow plugs on. Heating glow plug. Let's see how bad it gets. It might not run, like it's got all the bits missing. It's got no fiber mesh to wick the fuel around and uh, atomizing. Wow, that's really filthy now. You see it, look at the state of that. That, all that. All that black carbon and waste oil, that's bits of engine and sludge and whatnot. Yeah, no wonder it gets uh, choked up. All right, there we go, glow plugs, pulling nearly 12 amps. See, that says on the app, it's showing 11.9 amps, but on my current meter on the battery, it's showing nine point nine and a half, nine and a half amps. I'm guessing that the amps is just a kind of not sure if that measures amps or if it's just the voltage and what it thinks it should be. Anyway, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that it will light. Not a whole, not a huge amount of hope for my little heater up there. Trying its, trying its little hardest. Igniting. Oh, igniting. It is going up. It's start. It's doing something. There is some sort of combustion happening. Right. Once this is up and running, and let then we'll get the DC seven ten gas analyzer. And we'll go and poke up the exhaust and see what it's doing. Right. I'll bring you back once we're ready to gas test. Running. Oh, <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> oh man oh yeah that's I'm not I'm not even surprised wow go on attempt up you go go up go up the way go up no it's going up Right, well, in that case, let's just leave this to run through the two litres, which is one litre of waste, filtered waste oil and one litre of diesel. We'll run it through and hopefully it'll keep going until it runs out of fuel. And then we'll take it apart and see what the insides look like afterwards. Right, I'll bring you back then. Well, this doesn't look promising. Hmm, that's a lot of carbon in that exhaust. Ooh, forgot my... And tube's not fully attached anymore. Look at the amount of carbon in that. Ugh, yuck. God, what the inside the heater's gonna look like. Anyway, we're gonna find out. Right, I'll bring you back once I've opened it and we take the burn chamber apart. I had one person or a few people comment that because the heater was running out of fuel and not shutting down properly, that if I'd let, the, let it shut down and run the glow plug, I wouldn't have the carbon deposits. 
I don't know where you can see, but that mesh in there is absolutely spotless. Because when the heater runs out of fuel and it runs through a shutdown pro pro process and runs a glow plug, it burns off everything in there. Whereas that is absolutely spotless. Uh, the hole, you can't see it, but I can. It's also absolutely fine. That part is absolutely crystal clear. Right, let's get inside this burn chamber. Oh, that is unpleasant in there. Right, let me very delicately, because I imagine all this ash is going to try and fall off. Here is the inside of the burn chamber. Ooh, baby. Look at that. So, taking out the, all of the mesh and the screen and whatnot is a terrible, terrible idea. I'm trying very delicately not to touch any of this because it's so fragile. It just wants to poof and disappear off. Yeah, right, so modifying the burn chamber so that nothing sticks just makes it burn terribly, absolutely terribly. And you know what? I'm just going to set that on the floor somewhere where I won't touch it. Oh, it's, oh, it's the finest carbon ash. Oh, that's going to make a mess. And much the same as the inside. It's not too, too bad. Can you see in there? The side walls, you see there, they're a bit thick. Yeah, and so is the, the, the hole around the exhaust port that you can't even see it of anymore. Well, that is, yeah. That's choked. That, that, yeah. That's not good. So, we've tried uh, removing this mesh. This is the mesh that lives inside the burn chamber. It goes around the inside. For, uh, in there. Inside there, and then it goes around the inside behind that disc. It's that mesh that does, this. so it's, I someone quite clearly, uh, obviously, I realised once they'd said it, it made perfect sense. The mesh increases the surface area that the diesel can be hit up and atomized in like tenfold so you've got a lot more surface area inside because obviously the mesh is very fine interwoven strands all getting hot and all atomizing diesel so that didn't work that is an absolute and unabashed failure i mean it, no it's just not a bash failure because that even though i managed to get four liters to burn through that would still that would have clogged up eventually going by the amount of uh, soot that would have eventually clogged itself full i hope my exhaust's not too bad hopefully being uh, wrapped in the thermally stuff it's kind of helped it keep going and uh, stay hot enough to get out of the heater right so that was our modified burn chamber uh, to try and burn waste oil a uh, complete and utter failure i'm calling that one on that i tried three different attempts at running on waste oil, waste oil. So we've tried, well no, it's four different attempts. Originally we tried pure uh, waste oil straight out the sump and put it in the diesel here, and that had the expected result of it burned until it clogged up, basically. We've also tried filtered waste oil, and it burns, and eventually it just will slowly clog up the inside of your burn chamber. We've tried filtered and cut with 50% diesel waste oil again that burns but it also leaves a residue that will eventually clog up the inside of the burn chamber we've tried uh, 50 um, like waste oil and a 50% mix of diesel and a modified burn chamber with none of the bits inside the clog and that just runs horribly and ended up with well that black mess you've just seen there and this is what we're getting to. A lot of other people, their videos are on YouTube, people are people cleverer than me, that's almost everyone, they've done all of these tests. They've tried to burn every kind of combination of waste oil, diesel, petrol, ethanol, xylene, everything, you name it. They've tried it and eventually it just clogs up the inside of the burn chamber. Now that's fine, because burn chambers are cheap if you want to do that if you want to run a waste oil and a mix of all the wondrous chemicals magic mist oil under the sun these heaters will run and they will burn it and they run 
with enough mixing of all the chemicals and a li just a little bit of waste oil, they run not too bad. But they will still clog up eventually. It's just time. The less waste oil you use, the longer it runs uh, until it clogs up. Because there is no magic chemical that will get rid of burnt carbon. You go, go and Google it and go and see what Car carbon does not like to go away. It doesn't go anywhere. I, I saw someone post a forum that's easier to dissolve an entire engine and leave the carbon behind than it is to dissolve the carbon deposits. So, uh, for cleaning out of the carbon, like out of the, these, off the metal parts, you can use your brake cleaner, your xylene or something that'll dissolve the carbon deposits off the surface. But to actually get it to come out of this mesh, I don't know. I, I think it's going to require like heat. Much like a uh, DPF. So the DPF in your car or truck or whatever is made of ceramic for the purpose of it heats up to such a point that it turns the carbon and the oxygen into carbon dioxide. So it actually changes the chemical uh, composition of carbon into carbon dioxide and burns it back off as a gas. But it requires incredibly hot temperatures to do it. So hot in fact they make it out of ceramic for that purpose because it has to be hot. Most likely it would turn the inside of the heater into a molten goo if we tried to get it so hot to turn the carbon into carbon dioxide. Anyway, I've gone off on a tangent there. What was I saying? So, waste oil. First of all, it's, well, it's pretty horrific on the environment burning it. Uh, like, if we all started burning waste oil and things, I imagine it'd be pretty much an environmental disaster. Uh, with that said, that's probably why it's illegal in a lot of places. Not here in Mexico, but we're fine. We're okay here in Mexico for our experimental testing. We're all right for doing that. But yeah, if you're gonna run a heater on a cheap fuel, I'd probably go for like kerosene, heating oil. It's cheaper than road diesel, and obviously you're not on the road, so it doesn't matter. And it burns just the same in your diesel heater as diesel does. Uh, people think, well, I saw people saying it doesn't give out the same heat, but heating oil has got more energy in it than diesel, so it actually burns hotter and cleaner. With regards to the fuel pump, people are saying, oh, diesel's not as lubricating as uh, kerosene, which is very true, but these pumps could not care less. The pump they use for gasoline is the exact same pump they use for diesel. And diesel is, oh, gasoline is, it is slightly lubricating, but nowhere near as much as diesel. So these pumps, they don't actually care. Like, they will quite happily pump gasoline for the entirety of its life. So, kerosene is not a problem. Don't, that's another myth busted that they, you need to lubricate the pump. We thought it did, but it turns out now that I've had a gasoline pump and looked at the gasoline pumps that Eberspacher and Wabasto supply are exactly the same as the diesel pumps that they supply. So that's that myth busted. Yeah. Me? No, I'm going to not scrap the idea of the waste oil yet because hopefully I will have another product coming soon that will allow us to run waste oil and extend the life of the burn chamber inside the heater, but we'll get to that, we'll test it when it arrives. Until then, I was going to say leave comments, but if your comments are just going to be uh, about mixing with it with other things and doing other things and this and that and this and this, I don't care. I honestly don't, don't care no more, so don't, don't, don't tell me it's it works or you're doing it. If, unless you're doing that, unless post a video of you running on waste oil and then, I don't know, take the burn chamber out and show me it. That'd be interested to see. That's the only thing I'd be interested to see. Your burn chambers after running on waste oil for however long they run for. Apart from that, any questions, comments, anything, anything else, leave them down below. I'll read them, try my best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching.